Hi everyone. Well, today's video topic is tofu drag construction. A number of you have made a comment about this type of construction applying to some of the problem buildings we've had here in the United States. And uh, I hadn't really heard about this uh, term until I started doing videos about the Millennium Tower and, and, and you all made comments to that effect. And some of you actually have asked that I cover this topic. So this is what we're going to do today. Let's start out with the definition. Tofu drag project is a phrase used in the Chinese speaking world to describe a poorly constructed building, sometimes called tofu buildings. And apparently this phrase was coined by a former premier of the People's Republic of China in 1998. So this isn't a term a Westerner came up with, although it's been used to describe buildings in other countries, as I've mentioned. So what are we talking about? Let's look at this video here where an apartment dweller is basically breaking apart a section of concrete element here in this building. You can see it just crumbles in his hands. There's little to no cementation. Here's another example of a building column. It looks like mostly soil with no cement. No mixture of coarse and fine aggregate and cement. And of course, this is a tall column here in this building. Here's the collapse of a hotel in China. It's killed a number of people. So this type of construction has real consequences. It's becoming a growing problem in China, and it's happening to buildings that are just recently completed, let alone if these buildings age 10 or 20 years, the problems are going to only increase. So I'm going to go through a few examples of this type of construction. And, you know, China has fueled its growth in the last few decades, in particular, through building and infrastructure development. And they often tout how quickly they build these projects. And there's tremendous pressure to just go, 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 build bigger, build more. And so it's a, a complex situation that's been set up by the political system in China. Here's a parking garage that's collapsed. Now, as I mentioned, this problem applies to more recent construction than it has in the past, although it's been an ongoing problem. The problems seem to be increasing. A few years back uh, in China, they imploded 15 buildings. They weren't quite completed. Uh, no one had moved into any of the units. And essentially, the developer went broke mid-construction. Those buildings were bought by another developer, and they discovered so many construction defects that the buildings weren't salvageable, so they blew them up. And you can see here, even doing the demo, they didn't successfully knock them all down. There's that one building in the center hanging up. Here's an example of a building facade falling apart, apparently during high winds. Not very reassuring at all. So again, I want to get back to the root causes because there's so much pressure to get these developments done. There's a lot of competition among contractors, so essentially their margins are so low that's been reported the only way they can make money is to cut costs. Either they'll stiff their workers in terms of not paying them for labor, but more commonly, they'll use uh, counterfeit materials or reduced quantities of materials in a building in order to save money. And it's also indicated that uh, these builders, these contractors pay as much as 30% of the overall development costs for the building in bribes. So there's inspectors looking the other way. There's party officials that are approving this construction and expect to be done. They don't want to hear about problems. As one contractor put it, we have to do this, cut corners, in order to, to make any money at all. Why would we build it right and lose money? Besides, they could make money tearing it down and building it back again. So that's the mentality. Now let's look at some of the specific things they do to cut corners. Here's a video, some uh, steel reinforcement. Uh, looks like they're getting ready to, to place some concrete. And instead of using material like steel or coarse and fine aggregate, they're stuffing the reinforcing cage with uh, whiskey bottles. So not something you want to see. Here's a video segment. Either this is the world's strongest woman or this is counterfeit rebar. She's able to bend it like a pretzel. Here's a video of a residential apartment collapse in China. All these segments are in China. Six story building, just whammo, complete and utter collapse. Here's another view of that building. 
What I notice about these disasters in China is you don't see bystanders rushing in to help. Here's a building toppling down a hillside. That's rather dramatic. Kind of wonder what kind of foundation that building had. So I've shown a number of examples of problems with buildings. These types of problems apply to infrastructure projects. Apparently, Chinese contractors are known for skimping on backfill or compacting the backfill. Here's a video segment of someone traveling down a highway and just as they cross the bridge, they fall into a collapsed approach span, goes right into it. Now that void was reportedly created by flooding and the floodwaters eroded the soil there. But again, if you don't have proper compaction or even the right material, those roadway sections are gonna be more susceptible to that type of erosion and sinkhole formation. Here's an example of a roadway collapse. You can see the pavement starting to deflect and whammo, there it goes. And amazingly, the scooter rider just goes right into it. So China is experiencing problems with their real estate market. It's putting more and more pressure on builders and contractors. So this problem is only likely to increase. At the same time, news out of China, they keep touting how quickly they build these buildings. Here's an example of a 57-story building that was erected in 57 days. Now you can see it's a steel frame structure. It's time lapse of showing how quickly this thing's going up. And so they were able to do this because they prefabricated the floor sections and many other components at an off-site factory transport it to the job site, and then put it in place like a, a Tinker Toy set. But you have to wonder, you know, if you're doing something in 19 days, how good is the quality control? How good is the inspection process? I would think it's probably not very good. So I wanted to look into how many problems they've had with bridges. There was a study published in 2012 titled Statistical Analysis of the Causes of Bridge Collapse in China. And they go through this summary they document a total of 157 bridge collapses, not including those caused by earthquakes. They said a lot of these were mostly caused by natural disasters, flooding, and besides earthquakes. And again, that 157 bridge total excluded those bridges that collapsed due to earthquakes. It says unreasonable construction schemes is the main causes in the artificial factors and collapses of overload and collision has a large proportion in total. So you can see they have a problem with undoubtedly the quality control process. They're always in a hurry to erect these buildings. There's payoffs going on for inspectors to not show up or to look the other way. So China has their hands full with all these building and infrastructure problems. So let's couple this situation with the fact that soon China will have the most nuclear power plants of any country in the world. Here's a excerpt out of Wikipedia. Right now they're number three in nuclear power with 55 plants, 22 under construction, and 70 more planned. So what are the main reasons for China going so strong into nuclear? Well, first of all, I think they're realizing how much problems they're having with pollution from coal-fired power plants. And these aren't really efficient plants or large plants. They're typically located near the individual coal mines. So they're widely distributed. They're, they're polluting a large swath of the country. The other reason is for their nuclear plants, they plan to go to a fully closed fuel cycle, which means they're going to do reprocessing, which the United States... Um, due to Jimmy Carter's executive order banned in 1977 in the United States. But other countries are realizing that there's a lot of efficiencies that can be gained in the fuel cycle. I think it's 30% more efficient. But also you have to wonder, too, that they're looking to get plutonium for their weapons program. So what makes people think that the Chinese government, who's having difficulty administering proper construction methods and materials for buildings and infrastructure, is gonna do a good job on their nuke plants. I'm just I'm interested in what you think about that. And of course, corruption isn't limited to China alone. It's a widespread problem throughout the world, but the level of corruption in China is, I think, a few orders of magnitude greater than that in any other country. So I just Googled the question of to what extent corruption has caused the downfall of a government or society. And this note from Wikipedia, corruption has played a significant role in the downfall of many government states and empires throughout history. 
One notable example is the fall of the Roman Empire, where widespread corruption, political instability, and economic issues contributed to its decline. So we know that China also has a huge demographic problem, uh, essentially an inverted pyramid with <clears throat> a lot of older people and fewer younger people to work and consume and drive the economy. So it's not uh, a good situation with all these buildings, bridges, and now nuclear plants, in my opinion. So I want to give a shout out to all the channel members. I really appreciate your support. It helps me continue producing videos on a weekly basis, at least. Also, I want to thank those of you who have commented and hit those subscribe and like buttons. Also, check out the link in the description. You can check out my guide to the biggest civil engineering disasters of the last 100 years. Thanks for watching, everyone.